what does having the right to vote mean to you? Well, I think I think it's just such a fundamental thing, you know, um, it's it's being enfranchised. It, it gives people a reason to care about who represents them and to learn about political decisions and, and what's been decided and why. And I think I think it's kind of like how we talk about politics, but politics covers everything. You know, it's, it's how your local authority is run, how your how your country is run. And having the right to vote just means that you have a say in everything that happens. Did the reduction of voting age or having the right to vote being given to you right about the same age where you were 16, 18, um, did that motivate you to become more politically active or to become politically active? Uh, to become politically active, yeah. Um, my, my first vote was in the independence referendum as a 17 year old. So absolutely, it, it motivated me to become politically active. Um, I, I took the responsibility so seriously. Um, I didn't believe at the time that I and other 16 and 17 year olds should be allowed to vote. It sent me into this huge panic. I was like, okay, I need to learn everything about each side of the argument. But then, you know, the more I learned, the more I became incredibly pro-independence. Um, I ended up skipping school to campaign and then by the 17th of September, I was I was standing on this pier between Olmsted and Bergorden, getting photographed holding a massive yes sign, going, "I'm going to the count in Dingwall to to help count the votes." So, yeah, I think undoubtedly it, it made me politically active. I love hearing stories like that. So, what do you think the barriers might be to young folks who want to take up their right to vote in Scotland, especially now during the pandemic? And do you have any suggestions on how we can overcome them? Well, I think, first of all, thinking back, um, my the first time I heard arguments for and against independence was at school. And I've been thinking a lot about how people are starting to vote now and they've not been to school for the best part of a year. And I think not having that, that forum of peers will mean that they're, they're having to navigate it all themselves. And, you know, some wouldn't have been in that forum anyway, but I don't think we can overlook how important being able to socialise is in developing political opinions by debating and discussing with, with your pals, whether it's at school or over a coffee or at a club or something. I mean, I don't know how I would form opinions beyond the internet, and we all know what a, a terrible bubble that can be. Um, in terms of overcoming it, um, my party likes to write to first-time voters. Um, I've written quite a few letters as a, an organizer agent and, and as a candidate, just encouraging them to get in touch with questions, asking what they want me to do, uh, introducing them to our policies with a little quick summary. And I, I think that helps. I've also seen candidates in this campaign launching TikToks and campaigns on other social media platforms. And I think that's a great way to go about it. If you can translate your message into something that's really easily digestible in, in a language that increasingly more young people are using every year then you're getting to folk who aren't going to pick up a cold call and you know I think although I love leaflets I love making them and delivering them they, they are a bit impersonal and, and it can seem wasteful so so yeah give me a, a viral video or some eye grabbing infographics any day. What effect do you think the extended right to vote will have on the next parliament and Scottish society more broadly at this pivotal moment? Well, I, I think it's it. You can see it in every single opinion poll that comes out. You know, with everyone that's broken down by age, you see that young people tend to be more liberal, tend to be more interested in issues that are more about the long term future, like like climate change, uh, our membership of the EU, or independence, rather than more conservative issues. Uh, so undoubtedly, allowing those views to be expressed at the ballot box is going to mean that we get better diversity of, of ideologies in our parliament, which I think is a great thing. What do you feel are the biggest electoral issues for young Scots and how is your party addressing those issues? Well, I, I try to, to steer away from, you know, these two things are important to young people and young people only, but um, we can look at, you know, what's what affects the most young people, things like the cost of living. And, and at the moment that the SNP has just announced an exemption for council tax flat out for anybody under 22 and um, we're, we're increasing house building at, at a brilliant rate and, and that's going to take the cost of living down along with, with the likes of free bus travel which has just recently been extended as well 
job opportunities. We've got the, the Young Persons Guarantee, which is a job apprenticeship um, to anybody under 24. And, and going back, I suppose, to the last question, climate change, you know, I think that's that's been on this government's agenda for as long as we've been in it. Um, we, we had uh, some really bold targets to, to reach 100% renewable energy in Scotland. And, you know, 10 years ago, people said it was it was too bold. It was too optimistic. It was undoable. But but this year we're at 97%. That, that's amazing. Did voting rights affect your views on Scottish independence? Will it affect new young voters, new other voters, and you know how how do you think it will affect all the new people that are enfranchised? Well, it it doesn't change my views, but only because my views have been so developed and ingrained, uh, regardless of voting rights. But I, I do think that enfranchising people have never known anything other than devolution, with a background of Westminster elections still excluding them, is is going to in a lot of cases, enamour them to our cause. Um, like I said, when I was allowed to vote in 2014, I took it so seriously, and I took joining the SNP very seriously as well. I did a bit of shopping around. Like I went to an SSP meeting, a Green meeting, and an SNP meeting before I decided like where I belonged. And then by the next year, 2015, um, although I was campaigning as a member and an activist after school on Tuesdays and Thursdays at the weekend, for Drew Hendry and for Paul Monaghan, I wasn't allowed to vote for either of them. And, and that, I suppose, did in a way reinforce my view that we can do di things differently here and it's a good thing that we should be able to. What advice would you give to people trying to reach out to old, to younger voters? So people like me who are not young anymore um, or to reach out to people who are voting for the first time. And, and how can we improve the lines of communication? Uh, like I don't have a TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> yeah well I think other other than the things that I've said we're already doing I think the important thing is to not patronize you know I, it always bothered me when I was first getting involved people wanted me to be the youth officer and something would come up on schools and they'd go oh well Emma will know about that because she's young but you know I really hated being pigeonholed and I, I wanted to speak about the issues I'd faced in housing, the issues I'd faced as a carer. And I think there's, although there's so much value in having youth officers and youth wings, because it's a safe space for, for young people to, to be with other young people, it's not maybe as intimidating. I think we need to move away from going, oh, well, here's the, the young voice to kind of tick the box, or here are the issues that matter to young people. You know, just ask. <laughs> Don't say, here are the things that are important to you. Say, what are the things that are important to you? Give me your general thoughts, a space for us to listen to what you think about um, how important it is for people to vote. Just a place <laughs> for you to say your piece. <laughs> well, I mean, I think it's so important for anyone to vote. I, I always... You know, I, I expect on the doorstep to, to hear I'm voting for anyone other than you or I'm, I'm voting for insert party that I would never vote for. But when I hear, oh, I never vote, that, that really makes me sad. It's like, why? What What's made you feel like you're not involved? And I suppose, you know, there might be young people who who listen to this video. And I think I would just say it, it's there's no prescriptive way to to be involved in politics and I think I would say ignore the people who tell you that signing a petition is an activism that writing to your newspaper is an activism you know it, it's ask yourself how you want to engage if you want to join a party brilliant if you'd rather go through a third sector organization and do some lobbying that's great as well all of these things have impacts so yeah I think just decide for yourself what your youth engagement looks like <laughs> because there's no set agenda, there's no set rules for you to abide by.